Hi right, guys, how are you? Mind this one, Titanium. Welcome back to Real Macro Economics and Investing. Patreon.com slash Real Macro. Come on down, like, and subscribe. All right. So here's the deal. Um, package has been passed. Great. And what's the market doing? Well, it's dumping. Remember this little boost into the uh, into the uh, close on Friday, right? Uh, I was actually making fun of it, uh, <laughs> laughing while it was happening on the live session. Uh, and I actually did take the trade for uh, my subscribers. You know what? You guys don't, but you got to come down 60, 66 cents a day. <laughs> anyway, <coughs> made nice money. <coughs> Sold out of it at the end of the day. And, you know, for months now, all we've seen is that the market gaps up, gaps up. FOMO, 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 fear of missing out. Everybody's chasing, blah, 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 all this bullshit. Well, the stimulus comes out, and what happens? We have vaccine that's been passed, right, for Moderna. So now we have two vaccines. Woohoo! Uh, we got the stimulus. Woohoo! And what's the market doing? Going down. La 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 la. It's going down. So you know, again, it's got to open up. Let's see what's going to happen. It's trying to hold that previous high, and I said this all last week. You know, now that we broke out, it's got to hold that previous high. If it doesn't. It's going to be problematic, right? And that's that's it's problematic right now. It's problematic now. James uh, uh, said, "Well, you know, maybe they're waiting for the vote. Or maybe Trump won't sign. We don't know. That's possible. I don't think so, but that's possible. Um, let's see. All right. So S and P right now is down 0.23. Not not a whole hell of a lot. But again, when you're expecting that." Uh, oh, this is great! More money for the market, blah blah blah, and it's down 0.23. That's that's bad, all right? For the promo bulls, not for me. For the promo bulls. Nasdaq, pullback, same thing, all right? It's down uh, not a lot, 0.2. It's flat actually, all right? But from where it was, it's definitely down, right? It's kind of hooking over. Uh, small caps, big fucking jump all the way to the top. Uh, and remember last week I said, look. Wait for this to break. It started to break, came down, tested it, and look, boom, straight up, and then boom, straight down. This is not the kind of market that you want to be seeing when, quote unquote, good news is out, right? So, um, uh, you know, how can we validate that this is not good news? It's not what the market wanted. Well, uh, besides the fact that I've told you several times that 900 billion is not enough, it's garbage. Uh, you know, you need 46 trillion, you know, whatever. Uh, the dollar, uh, you can't see it on a small time frame. I'm not sure why, but on a daily, you can see it's popped. It's popped up, okay? It's above 90 now, and it's starting to make its way back up. So that's a fear indicator is the way I look at it. Uh, on the flip side, you can also say that, well, you know, the stimulus is not enough, right? So it's not what the dollar bears were you know hoping for that it would be a bigger stimulus which would devaluate the, the currency so uh, since it wasn't as bad the dollar is, some people are covering shorts the dollar is going up you know de depends on what you want to blame it on doesn't matter both can be valid both can be valid but the point is that as I've shown you before that the market has been going up as the dollar has been devaluing. So when this relationship reverses, well, guess what? Stocks down, dollar up, right? It's not, it's not that difficult. So you know, uh, be ready for that move to the downside in the stocks is is what I'm trying to tell you. Taking a look at the rest of the markets, the dollar versus the uh, Japanese yen, it's kind of sideways. Let me go maybe smaller time frame. Uh, Euro, US dollar pulling back. It's still a bull flag testing the bottom of the trend line. Uh, Great Britain pound made a pullback, but they also have their Brexit talks, which are going to resume tomorrow. So that's probably in, you know, uh, affecting this as well. Uh, dollar popped against the Turkish lira, Russian ruble. Is, the, is uh, losing value right now against the dollar. So look for this one to possibly break out here. Okay, that's a nice little trade. 
if it breaks above here, that uh, 74, it's a nice little trade. Uh, dollar CAD. Remember all last week I kept telling you this is this is a bullish structure, right? It's going to have to correct. Well, boom, here you go. It's correcting. It's breaking out. Magic, right? Australian dollar is pulling back a little bit. Uh, you got an M pattern, right? That's an M pattern. So look for a deeper correction. Uh, New Zealand dollar USD, same thing. Look for a deeper correction. Dollars strengthening against the peso. So, you know, it's confirmed. It's confirmed that the market is disappointed, that stocks are probably going to pull back, and the dollar is going to strengthen. All right. Now, let me look at the 10 year. 10 year, uh, try to break out. All right. But I would expect this one to. Uh, you know, make another push to the upside. It still has that cup and handle thing going, right? And then you have another bigger cup and handle here. If I zoom out, you can see it, right? Let's see. Let's see. It broke out, came back into structure. Let's see. Uh, if it starts to break down here, that would be another confirmation that they're selling stocks, buying bonds, pushing down interest rates. And at the same time, the dollar will be rising, right? So what do you think the VIX is going to do? The VIX is probably going to spike. Okay. So keep an eye on the VIX. For right now, uh, you know, it's in the middle of nowhere at 21. It still has that round bottom thing going for it, as I mentioned before. All right. It's a round bottom here. So look for a push to the upside. If this, if if we're, if we're analyzing this correctly. Again, stocks down, dollar up, bonds up, interest rates lower, VIX higher. All right? If that does not occur, right, because we still need more information, we need the markets to really start to open up. If that's not the case, right, then the opposite is true. We just have to wait. All right? All right, so let's move on to this video. You know, this guy, Steve, he, he gets a lot of things confused. I don't know what he's talking about half the time. Uh, I'll try to decipher it. Some people ask. All right, so let's kind of go through this video. And Will the banks tell you what spring the trap with. door under the bond market to free up all of that money that they've got on the long end of the speculative position? Which, if you're wondering what we're talking about, tune in Monday where we talk about uh, the speculative positioning in the futures market. So let's talk about bonds. Let's talk about speculative position from banks in the bond market i don't know what he's talking about look again the banks are the middleman all right high net worth individuals pension funds hedge funds everybody and their mom who buys these fun funds right look at the uh the the, uh, the fangs they own 250 billion worth of treasuries yes they're not going to take that 250 billion Go put it in a 250,000 FDIC insured uh, checking account. It's not the way it works. So they have to go buy these things. And the banks do that. So this speculative position, uh, long bonds, and I, I don't know what he's talking about. But I know that it sounds like a cute story. Like, oh, it's the bond. I mean, it's the banks. Ooh, the banks are doing this and the banks will do that. This is the kind of shit that, you know... Um, Uneducated people say, right? Oh, I think this COVID. Yeah, I think I think that they are doing this to control us. I think they're trying to kill the dead people because they want their money. Yeah, we're going to co collapse a $80 trillion global economy because we want to steal um, the, the savings uh, from the Indian elderly. Like, what are you talking about? What in the world? Where, where do you come up with this shit? But people believe these things. Why? Because it's simple. It's simple. It's simple, right? Um, the cavemen. Oh, it's thunderstorms. The gods are mad. Grab the, the the village idiot. Gut him. Oh, look. The thunderstorm went away. See, it worked. Okay, next time we have a thunderstorm, let's gut somebody else. This is the kind of mentality. So when I hear the banks and the speculative positions, to me, it's like, eh, bullshit what's going on there because there's this view that there's this mythical lie in the sand that somewhere that if we can get 
or we, or if the market can break it, obviously I'm uh, not in support of that. But if the market can break that line, the interest rates are going to just go straight up, right? Hyperinflation, you know, double digit interest rates. It's going to be pandemonium. We're going to get all that inflation that people have been begging to get. I know they want it so bad that they're shorting the dollar, buying gold because they really want it, even though they really don't. Is that going to happen? No. What do you mean no? How does he know? <laughs> How does he know that's not going to happen? First of all, what imaginary line? There's no imaginary line. If that ever happens, it's the end. It's done. Okay? It's finished. It's game over. You can't raise interest rates. You raise interest rates, the whole fucking thing comes down. To say that, well, that's never going to happen. Why? Well, it hasn't happened in 40 years. Therefore, it will never happen. That's just stupid. That's just stupid. You can't make... It's, it's kind of like saying, uh, you know, uh, I'm an atheist. Well, you can't be an atheist. You can be agnostic, but you can't be an atheist. Right? You can't prove it one way or another. Right? So you're agnostic. So it's kind of the same thing here. But again, it sells... This shit kind of sells, man. You know, and I, I believe me, I, I grew up in a different world than this person and most people, right? You say what you got to say. You say it straight, you, 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 you're not little pansy and put flowers around and all this bullshit. You say what you got to say and that's it. Done. Finished. Walk away. Right? It doesn't sell on YouTube. I know. I, I figured that out after 10 years of doing this. But you, you got to be straight with people. You know, in, in, my, in my book. Now, I know for viewership, you don't. You have to lie to them, but I, I, it makes me crazy. And the reason is, is... The mythical line in the sand is kind of bizarre, but let's go look at it. What, what no am mythical. I talking it's about? True. Well, it first of all, here's 30 year treasury yields. And people believe that if yields can get past a certain point, maybe it's 1.7% where they could not pass today. Maybe it's 1 1.5 or 1 or what? 1.5, 1 1.75. Nobody believes that. There's not a single person that I have seen anywhere say that if interest rates crosses this line, then this will happen. Not one. And if you guys can find one, please post it underneath. Or 1.765. Or maybe it's back up here in year two. That somehow, all of a sudden, this chart is going to look more like up here. No, or not even that. Maybe it's going to be way up here somewhere. Maybe even higher. What is the deal? So the view that, that people have, that the market has, is that quantitative easing is money printing. Now, we know for a fact that it is not. It's just a swap. And that is absolutely false. The pure definition of money printing is QE. It doesn't increase the, def the debt. It's not a deficit. But the pure definition of money printing is QE. He doesn't have a clue as, as to what he's talking about. Well, it's an asset swap. Yes, it's an asset swap from a bond, which is the deficit, which is the expansion of the money supply, right? It's a bond. It's not a. It's not the. It's not the dollars, right? It's a bond. That's what money printing means. A bond, expansion of bonds. When you take a bond and you swap it for a dollar, oh, it's a reserve. All money is money. It doesn't matter. Reserve is a dollar, okay? And you turn it into a reserve. That is money printing. Okay, because with a reserve, you can go out and buy whatever you want. Now, do not confuse that with required reserves. Required reserves. You had the, the requirement that the banking system had to have $1.5 trillion in reserves. These could, you can't touch them. Why? Why could you not touch them? Why did they have that, that, that uh, law, that rule? Why? Because if there was a bank run, you would have that liquidity those dollars that you can go out and you know hand out to the people so you don't get a bank run so even if the if the fed goes to the open market and buys a bond and exchanges that for a reserve which is a dollar and that reserve goes towards the requirement of that 1.5 trillion then that means that frees up all the other <laughs> reserves that would have been used and you can do whatever you want with that money. So it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Either way you cut it, it's money printing. It's the pure definition of money print printing.
reserves. There's no money printed. You know, the, there is oh. some leakage out to the M2, but, you know, if somebody is selling treasuries, they're... There's some leakage out into the M2. There's some leakage out to the M2? Really? How can it leak if it's not money printing then? I don't know what he's talking about. They don't know that the Fed might end up buying them. So the notion that there are people that are directly on the outside feeding the Fed, eh, it's really a misnomer. I mean, if they were going to sell treasuries, they were selling them anyways. And then there's this belief, which we'll cover later today in the show, that somehow stimulus is massively inflationary. Even though in the history of stimulus packages, none of them have been stimulative, some of them in this very short term, but they're not. But now we believe that, yes, it has to be. And so when you take QE and you take... Yeah, the, the mistake is that, you know, that um, stimulus is going to create um, more money supply into the uh, economy, okay? Again, what is stimulus? What, what, what is the pure definition of deficits? It's an expansion of the bonds. That's what a deficit is, okay? You cannot have inflation with an expansion of bonds, Okay, the fact that you're recirculating those dollars back into the productive economy uh, it is not is not stimulative. So what do you do when you when you're increasing deficits? Well, the government the government issues a bond, the Fed auctions it off to the banks, they get the dollars. Where the banks get the money? The the banks got the money from the savers. Okay, and then there the exchange occurs, and then the the Fed takes that money, gives it to the treasury that's going to be spent into the productive economy. And then from the productive economy, it's either going to be um, uh, exported, dollars will be exported to the rest of the world, which means they're going to import goods and services, or it's going to be dissaved from the household income to savings to profit. Okay? And profit savings are net of cost, right? So it's, uh, it's savings. So where do the savings go? They go right back into the, into the asset bubble. Right? Stocks, bonds, commodities, real estate. Okay, so how are you going to get inflation like that? Inflation means you have to increase the amount of money supply in circulation in order to get prices to go up. Or the monetary inflation where the currency devalues. Right? When the currency starts to devalue, you're going to get inflation in the productive economy. But, you know, to say that it's not inflationary... Well, yeah, it's not inflationary in the productive economy, but it's massively inflationary in the asset bubbles. Go look at stocks, bonds, and real estate. <laughs> look at commodities now. Everything is going up. So what do you mean it's not inflationary? It's inflationary. It's just not inflationary where you think it is. So when the Fed QEs, what does the Fed do? Well, the Fed comes over here. He QEs, right? Goes through the banking system in the open market, right? And buys bonds in the open market. Not for the price that they issued them at, but for the price of whatever the going rate is. So if you if they issued bonds at a hundred, uh, you know, it's a hundred and ten dollars or whatever it is, or a hundred dollars, and and you know the open market says, well, now it's a hundred and one. Well, the Fed is going to buy that bond at a hundred and one dollars. So where did that extra one dollar come from? Right, right. The the Fed has to print it up, but they issued the bond for a hundred, and now they're gonna they're gonna buy it back for a hundred and one. That leaves one dollar extra for somebody to have a profit, right? <laughs> so, so what are you saying? It's not in inflationary. What, what are you saying that 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 QE is not uh, is not money printing? Of course, it's money printing. The fact that it has to go through the banking system and you just cut it off, well, it's just here. It's just here. This is all that's happening. No, no, no. Where where the banks get the money? They can only get it from high net worth individuals, right? That's why they buy the bonds. They buy the bonds, so the primary dealers buy the bonds so they can give it to the secondary dealers, right? The secondary dealers, and then the secondary dealers give it out to the savers and investors. What, What is he talking about? He doesn't understand it. It's very frustrating. Uh, you know, whatever. Right, let's go back and listen. Stimulus. All you've got is a recipe for interest rates. They can only go up. That's the only option. There's no way else. They have to go up. It's been 40 years of low interest rates. And even though in Japan they've done quantitative easing and stimulus at levels beyond what we're doing.
All right. Well, first of all, you cannot compare Japan because Japan is a net exporter. The U.S. is a net importer. And both are world reserve currencies. Granted, the U.S. is more of a bigger part of a world reserve currency. But nonetheless, Japan is also a world reserve currency. But what's the difference? Well, they export, we import. So you cannot make that connection that, well, look at Japan. They've done it for, you know, 40 years. They're fine. No, no, no. They're exporters. They acquire foreign reserves. We, we export our dollars to the rest of the world. Look at Japan's unemployment rate, right? The highest it's been was back in 2002, 2003, which was 5.4%. And then again in 2009, right? The rest of the time is, is just been going straight down. Unemployment rate in Japan is about 2.4. Can you even possibly compare that to the US, especially right now? No, no, it's not even, it's not even measurable. The worst of Japan's unemployment rate is the best in the U.S. We, we got down to 3.4% unemployment. We were shitting our pants. We were celebrating. Oh, it's a historical low. Oh, you know, the biggest, longest job expansion in history. We were peeing ourselves. And their unemployment now is 2.34. Why? Because they're exporters, right? When, they, when they're producing goods and services for the rest of the world, well, they're going to create jobs. But... Mosler is going to tell you, well, no, you know, that's a cost. That's not a benefit. Well, how the fuck is it a, is it a cost when you're creating jobs and you only have 2.34% unemployment? And then he's running around. Well, we need a job guarantee. We need to give the government has to hire people to lower interest rates and we'll hand them free money. And, you know, we can mask it up and call it a job. They can peel gum off the ground. So you see how Mosler is fucked up. You see how this guy is fucked up. They don't understand what they're saying. And, 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 you know, from my perspective, it's frustrating to sit here and listen to this. And especially that people actually listen to this guy. Okay? And, you know, I, I want to be nice, but, dude, you don't have a fucking clue. You can't compare Japan to the U.S. Their interest rates are pinned right near zero. But, but in America, things are different. Of course they're different. So what's really the picture here? Is people don't understand what this mythical line in the sand is. So who are straw the biggest argument. buyer of straw man argument, straw man argument. He doesn't understand. Nobody knows where that line is. Nobody knows where that line is. If it comes, we're fucked. Okay. Nobody expects that to come because our wealth is still a hundred and whatever trillion dollars and our deficits are 27, but they're rapidly going towards, the, towards that hundred trillion, isn't it? Huh? And if you take our private debt and our public debt and combine it, we're like 250% uh, of GDP. That, that's not good. Treasury, Fed, large commercial banks, and foreign central banks and governments. Okay, so he's saying that the only people that own treasuries are the Fed, the banks. Well, where, where, where did the banks find money? What do the, do the banks create iPhones? Do they sell Amazon? Do they create satellites, Boeing 777s? Do they produce these things? No. No. <laughs> right? Do, do they have insurance companies that, uh, you know, like Geico that Buffett owns? Do they make McDonald's cheeseburgers? What, what the fuck does the, do banks do? Nothing. That money is given to them by these large entities that create jobs, that create innovation, that create real things. The banks, and he cuts it off there and it's frustrating, the banks don't have that wealth. It's other people's wealth. Okay, so you can't say, well, it's the Fed, it's the banks, and as if it's just, a, a, you know, the, the, the wealth is created by the banks. No, it's not. And foreign entities, you know, the, again, Bullshit. Those are the three. No. Now the wrong. Fed, when it does quantitative easing, does not sell its securities. So if you want to look at this chart and say, gee, why can't yields go up? I mean, they have to go up. Everybody is selling these things. Everybody is short these. They must go up. It's because nobody's saying they must go up. They're saying that it will go up, that if you keep printing money, what again, what happens is you keep getting those, those bonds and they're appreciating through price. You're not making interest rate. 
So forget about you buying a bond today so you can make uh, 5% interest rates for the next 10 years. That's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. So what's left? Well, the only thing that's left is bond appreciation. The bond has become like a stock. That's why monetary policy is ineffective anymore. It doesn't mean anything. You can't take interest rates less than zero. I mean, you can, but, you know, zero is zero. That's it. Done. That tool is finished. That tool is finished. And that's why now they have to QE. They have to go out into the, into the, into the yield curve and start buying uh, longer-term bonds. Why are they buying the bonds? To reduce the amount of bonds in circulation, increase the money supply so they can push down interest rates. Well, that means that the bond is behaving like a stock. You're not going to buy a 10-year bond for your kids. So, you know, 10 years from now, 15 years from now, they're going to have money uh, saved up from interest to go to college or some shit. That's done. The only thing you're hoping for is price appreciation, meaning that whatever you bought it at today, you can sell that bond tomorrow for a higher price than somebody else. But that doesn't work because the higher the bond goes, the higher it has to go nominally to make up for that percentage gain. You understand? And then when that percentage gain is insufficient, nobody's going to hold it because of their health or because of the goodness of their hearts or because they're patriots. They're going to sell the shit out of it. And once one person starts to sell, then the second, then the third, and the fourth, everybody's going to sell. So then you will see that interest rate go boop, straight up, boop, like that, snap. And then what are you going to do? Print? You can't. That's what got you there. What are you going to do? Impose austerity? QE more? <laughs> what are you going to do? You can't. That's the problem. So he's making a straw man argument here, a very big straw man argument. He's like, you know, creating a cute story. Well, there's a hero and a villain, and this can never happen because it hasn't happened in four years, in 40 years to Japan. Therefore, it's not going to happen to us, and da-da-da-da. Man, please. Because the Fed is removing $5.5 billion of Treasury securities, 30 years, specifically 30-year Treasury securities, from the market on average every month. Now what that means, my friends, is the available amount of treasury securities in the world is shrinking every month by five and a half billion. And the belief is that there's gonna be so few of them that they're going to become totally worthless. Does that make any sense? I mean- Yes, it makes sense because if you don't get bond price appreciation, nobody wants them. That makes them worthless. That makes them worth less. Not that they're zero, they're worth less. You understand? And when they're, when they're worth less, that means the interest rate is worth more. And that's how interest rates rise. Hello, Bond King. Even when I sound it out, say it out loud, it sounds dumb. The belief is that if you remove enough 30 year treasury securities from the market, they will become completely worthless. It's not how it works. There's plenty of demand for them. We've seen it in the treasury auctions over the last several months. Ah, okay. Now we understand. So because there's demand for them today, that means there will always be a demand for them forever. People are just going to run out and buy treasuries and no price appreciation, no interest rates. They're just going to buy them. Why? Because the central bank is removing it. Where are they removing it from? Who, how are they removing those 5 billion? QE is 120, by the way. Right? How are they removing them? they got to go out into the open market. They can't buy them from themselves at the same price. They have to buy them at market price in the open market. You understand? So I, he's gone, dude. This guy, uh, I've watched several of these videos, and he just keeps getting worse and worse. The, 30 -year, the demand on 30-year auctions is strong. Foreign central banks want to buy them. But wait a minute, Steve. I thought the foreign central banks were reducing their supply of treasury securities. They've been reducing it. What they're doing is they're letting securities just roll off. They're not dumping them. They're not selling them. They just... They're not selling them. They're letting them roll off. They're letting them to mature. Oh, it's the same thing. If you, the bonds are perpetual, right? They're not going to go away. You're not going to pay down the debt. Forget about that idea. Okay, so if you have governments that are letting them, their 
their bonds mature, and they're not rebuying, it's the same thing as selling. It's the same thing as selling. It might sound cute because, well, they're learning them to mature. Yeah, but they're not rebuying them, right? So they're reducing, they're reducing the, their holdings. And I've mentioned this several times that you'll see that uh, back in 2008, I think it was 6.3, 6.4 trillion dollars of foreign holdings. Fast forward to 2020, it's 7 trillion and change. So there hasn't been a substantial increase in uh, dollar uh, treasuries. And remember, treasuries are a savings account. Doesn't mean that they don't have reserves, but you don't see that in the treasury. You don't see that in the bond market, right? I think Moser has explained this very well. If it's in reserves, it's in a checking account. If it's in treasuries, it's a savings account. If foreign governments are choosing not to put their um, um, reserves to savings account, reserves is a checking account and treasury is a savings account, well, it's reducing. Mature or not mature, it doesn't matter. It's reducing. Selling them, not selling them doesn't matter because <laughs> they're not buying it. They have securities that mature every month. And so there's a dollar shortage. And what oh. happens is foreign central banks, they accumulate dollars. There's a dollar shortage? Where the fuck is this dollar? So why, why is the dollar falling? There's such a demand for it and there's such a shortage. Is he not here? Since March, it's been, it fell 12%. What shortage? For global trade, and then they convert those dollars in their savings <coughs> to higher interest paying treasury securities. It also helps reduce the inflationary effects of having a, a fiat currency in your country. When they are short dollars and they need them, they just let some of them mature to get money back. That's what they do. And then you have the large commercial bank. To get money back, what? They, they move it from treasuries to checking. That's it. What do you mean, get them back? Uh, I don't know what he's talking about. Cross a magic line where there's going to be a flood of selling of treasuries that's going to send interest rates higher. But the Fed isn't selling. Commercial banks aren't selling. And if you look at what the foreign central banks are doing, they're mostly letting their shorter term uh, bills and notes roll off. They're not dumping their bonds because they're bidding for them at auction. So the reality of the situation is how can they roll off and then bid for them at auction? What is he talking about? I have no clue what he's talking about. The, the holdings can either be in reserves or checking. That's it. And the Fed. Just like the holdings of Juan for the United States is held at the Chinese Central Bank. The same thing with Yen. Japanese Central Bank. They don't take them. They don't bring them. They don't put them in an airplane and fly them over. I, I have no idea what he's talking about. The reason I can sit back and not worry about, like, why is there this persistent selling? Because there are people that believe that this is going to happen. And they're so convicted in their decision that they're not just all in. They've doubled down and then they went even further in. Nobody has doubled down. Nobody believes it's going to happen anytime soon. That's the point. The point is that bonds keep rising and interest rates keep falling because nobody believes it can ever happen. He is he's creating another straw man argument and he's beating it up and kicking the shit out of it. And he, that makes him smart and everybody else stupid when there is nobody else. It's kind of like the Trump bots. They were like, well, you're going to see is the, the silent majority is going to speak. <laughs> Right? What happened to the silent majority? <laughs> they were silent because it didn't exist. It's the same thing with these people that oh, they believe it's just going to be hyperinflation. Yeah, at some point, you keep doing the same thing. You can't print, borrow, and import to infinity. Right? So why is there a fluctuation in treasuries? Why is there a fluctuation in treasuries? Up and down and whatever it does. Right? Because of the market sets rates. And the market decides based on information that you know, they're either going to short the dollar, they're going to be long the dollar, they're going to do whatever they want with treasuries, right? So I don't know, I don't know what he's talking about. 
But let me explain to you how this selling and short shorting of the bond market works. Because selling is pretty simple, right? I own something and I sell it. But what if I don't own something and I want to sell it, right? How do I do that? Well, I can do it through the futures market or the options market. And while this is not meant to be an example of how it all works, but I'm going to give you an example of how you can have more treasuries in the market than there are actually treasuries that have been issued by the U.S. Treasury. You say, wait, what? Yeah, there's actually you can actually have more treasuries circulating in the market than there are actual treasuries issued from the Treasury. I know what you're thinking. No, you don't know what I'm thinking because that's just stupid. All right, so let's say that you, there's a bond, okay? And this person owns that bond, all right? And then you've got another person that wants to short the market. I was correct. All right, so he, he negotiates with this guy, hey, can I borrow your treasury? And then I'm going to sell it in the open market. And I'll give you, I don't know, whatever, interest rate. Okay, I'll give you some percentage of interest rates while while I'm, I'm selling it and here's the strike price the strike price is a hundred and five dollars so anything from one hundred and five dollars down is going to be this guy's profit anything from 105 and up is going to be this guy's profit okay so the guy goes out he borrows it he sells it in the open market Let's pretend that there's nobody else left in the economy and the same guy buys it back. Okay? That obligation that this guy has is still to this guy. He still owns the bond. He's paying it he's paying an interest rate. He's collecting the interest rate. Okay? And he just gotta wait for the dollar fluctuation. What where's the extra treasury? There is no extra treasury. There's just an extra obligation to that treasury there's an extra bet if you will on that same treasury it's not more treasuries he didn't create more treasuries so maybe he's not explaining it right maybe he doesn't understand it or whatever but there, there's no extra there's not extra treasuries i'm totally off my rocker but here's how it works when someone wants to short the bond market, they go to the dealer and they borrow, borrow a bond. This is important. They borrow a bond, correct, for an interest rate. One thing to understand, they borrow a bond. Now, when they borrow it, the, the primary dealer still holds the original bond. There's no primary dealer. Forget about the primary dealer. Primary dealer already sold, sold it to the secondary dealer. It doesn't matter. It's, a, it's, a, it's somebody who's trading bonds. Okay, you borrow from wherever and you short it. You borrow it, you negotiate whatever the, the price is, and you short it. You sell it. You sell it right back to the same market. Okay? You're still obligated for that treasury. Bond. And then they take that borrow bond. Now, this is, remember, one became two. One, now there's two. There's no, the original there and the borrowed one. They both are in existence simultaneously. No, there's no secondary... There's a secondary obligation, but there's not a secondary treasury. It's the same treasury. He, the guy sold the same treasury that he borrowed. Okay. Now, the fact that the same person could buy that same uh, bond doesn't make a difference. Or if it's somebody else, it doesn't matter. It's the same bond. The only difference is that the guy that borrowed it to short it has an obligation. Okay. That's it. That's it. He's got to go out and buy it and give it back to the guy. But it's the same treasury. It's not a secondary treasury. They take that borrowed bond and they sell it out on the market. The same so one. So they, they owe the dealer back that bond or a similar bond matching, you know, it, the, the nature of what they bought. Obviously, it doesn't have a serial number on it that needs to be tracked down. So what happens is exactly. when you see all this rampant selling against the bond market, it's not just existing supply, it's borrowed supply as well. And so what happens is you get more inventory out there. It's not more inventory. It's not. You cannot create another treasury just because you borrowed it to sell it. It's the same bond. Then actually can it, then actually exist. Now some of you think this can't be true. It is actually true. It is very, very true. There's articles. You can go read about it. It is absolutely true. So what you're seeing is 
borrowed treasury securities hitting the market, just hitting the market, boom, do boom, every month after month, week after week, day after day, because there's this belief that if we can just cross this mythical line, wherever it's at, at one second. Nobody's borrowing to short bonds because there's a mythical line. Nobody's doing that. If you're going to do that, you're going to go out and get some credit default swap or something. <laughs> you're not going to... Nobody's shorting a bond because they believe it's going to cross a magical line and they're going to become, you know, infinitely fucking wealthy. Nobody's doing that. Seven at one eight or somewhere up here. The Fed and all these other people that own all the securities are going to come selling and they're not. So what's happening is all these speculators, speculators are getting deeper and deeper and deeper into their short positions and they keep finding out as they sell because the Fed alone needs five and a half billion of new issuance per month. That's not, or five and a half billion that is not coming from new issuance. They have to go to the market and source it. And they source it through the primary dealer banks who then flip it to the commercial banks, put it in the reserve, and then the, then the swap with the Fed. See that? They flip it to the commercial banks. Yes. Okay. So you get that at least. At least you understand. It. <laughs> All right. That occurs. So five and a half billion needs to go out of the market every month. Meanwhile, the speculators are just trying to short, 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 short. And who has the most staying power? The people that can borrow and short the market or the Fed, who we now know is going to be doing QE for at least three more years. That's a bullshit argument because bonds are a part of a portfolio. Okay. So if you're shorting bonds and you're buying stock, right, stock market is going up. You don't give a shit. It's a part of a portfolio. It's not like, oh, I'm just going to take this one bond and I'm going to keep double downing on it. And I have no other investments. And that's all I'm going to do. I'm just going to keep shorting, shorting, shorting because I'm going to, I'm going to outlast the Fed. Nobody like what kind of childish bullshit is this? Like, you got to be a child to, to believe that th this is the way it works. Right. Does it start to make sense? So what happens is at some point, to make sense? all no. these speculators have sh have sold and shorted as much bonds as they possibly can give do. They, they do reach a limit. So everyone has now sold, right? I don't know. If, I'm, I'm just saying in, in our example, okay? I don't know. If maybe they're not done selling. Maybe there's more next week. I don't know. But it's not far off. And all of a sudden, once all the selling is done, what will happen to interest rates? They're going to go back down. Why? Because the Fed, again, needs a minimum of five and a half billion every month, depending on how they're going to go back. Down. <laughs> all right. If the bond, if, if the stock market is going, is going up, right? You're making money on this, right? And then you have that the bond market is selling off, right? What's happening to interest rates? Interest rates are rising right okay what happens if it starts to flip over and they start selling bonds what are they going to do they're all going to run in and buy bonds right when they start buying bonds what happens to interest rates starts coming back down so it's part of this it's part of a portfolio no one is sitting the way he's presenting it is such garbage it's it's just stupid oh there's a dollar shortage where where the fuck is the dollar shortage there's no dollar sh shortage. Here's what a dollar shortage looks like. Right here. Boom. Here's another dollar shortage. Boom. Where's the dollar shortage? Right? Well, these are the swaps. Right? Central bank liquidity. Here's a, so here's a little shortage here, too. That's a shortage. Where's the shortage now? There's no shortage of dollars. What's he talking about? Anyway, let's continue. The treasury auctions go of of uh, what's called on the run or uh, off the run um, existing treasuries are not on the run off the run so they need to go out to the bond market and get those bonds now what happens when yields start to fall and everyone is short well bond prices are going to rise and start squeezing out everyone is not short dumb the shorts mm. and as some okay so short squeeze are what sets price no a short squeeze just creates a, a volatility move. That's what a short squeeze does. Short squeeze does not set price. Okay. Short squeeze does not. He's been wrong for, for a while, I guess, and he, he's getting frustrated and he's coming up with shit because interest rates have been rising, right? They're almost up to 1%. When he said, oh, no, they, they can never go to 1%, and they did. So now he's trying to sell some fucking story to somebody 
who doesn't know what the fuck they're talking about, and they're just going, oh, okay, you know, you know, Steve is right. He's trying to convince him. At some point, they're going to capitulate because they've gone max short. They've shorted all that they can short, and then they shorted some more, and then now finally they're done. Okay? And then they will need to cover those shorts. Well, how will they do it? They're going to need something called dollars. Well, guess what? Everyone's been shorting and dumping those like they don't want them. And cash in brokerage accounts, according to money managers, is down to about 2%. So what's going to happen is these speculators are going to need dollars, and there aren't any. What do you mean there's no dollars? What are you talking about, bro? <laughs> what the fuck? The fact that they're not in treasuries and they're sitting there in reserves doesn't mean the dollars don't exist. What shortage of dollars? What? Oh. So boom, now all of a sudden dollars going to start to go whoo, up oh, and no painful. one's going to see that coming. So there's going to start to be a dollar shortage. <laughs> and then bond prices are going to keep going up and they're going to get squeezed some more. And then they're going to have to sell their stocks because they're going to need cash and they're going to start selling it into an illiquid market. What the fuck is he talking about? Then they're going to start selling stocks? Are you fucking insane? No, it's part of the portfolio. They start selling stocks, they're going to start buying bonds. It happens simultaneously. Hello? So when people say, how is it you know, you're not worried about all this persistent selling? Because the more selling... I'll tell you why he's not worried about it, because he don't have a fucking dime in the market. That's why he's not worried about it. That's why he's not worried about it. Okay? That's why he's not worried about it. He don't have a fucking dime in the market. He's another fucking Norman that he can just keep doubling down and eventually he'll be right. That's why. When there is, the more people that are short the bond market, the more they're going to have to turn around and buy it back later because the Fed is going to beat them. This is like a long distance race where your competitor never gets tired, never needs to eat, never needs to stop. It just continues to go. The speculators will run out of gas. And they're not far from it. I mean, they've been so aggressive on this. There isn't much left to go. This is one of these Mike Norman's, um, the, the dollars, the mother of all shorts, eventually they'll get tired or whatever the fuck he's saying. Remember this video. Just remember this. And when it happens, the trap door under the stock market goes like that. Equity prices. That's what happens. The bond market signals this. And all of a sudden, what will happen is bond prices will go straight up. Why? Because the dealers who are holding the opposite end of this trade are going to make all those short sellers pay big time. Oh, yeah. Big time. Sure. Here are aggregate bonds. Okay. <laughs> Here's aggregate bonds right here. They, they're going to make them pay big time. They're just going to crush them. Bond, aggregate bonds are down 1.61%. And they will fucking pay for it. They will pay for it. What the fuck? This guy's gone, bro. <laughs> this guy, <laughs> he's taking some fucking massive crack before he made this video. I... I can't help myself but not make fun like this. I'm sorry. I'm I'm really really sorry, but I I I tried to stop doing that, but fuck that, bro. This guy's gone. I don't know, he's doing shrooms or what the fuck he's doing. That's why I'm not worried. Because when you're long oh, something, your biggest yeah, risk course. is just waiting. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> when you know the setup, when you see how the board is is set, right? Oh. And you know how the game is played. Oh. You know the oh, he knows how the game is played. He sees the board. Yeah, that's why he's not worried about it. Yeah, go put some fucking money in the market, bro. Go put some money in the market, and then we'll, we'll see how much you worry about it. Because if you don't have money in the market, you don't worry about it. Everything is fucking peachy. Please. Eventual outcome. Yeah, okay. I don't love it, the fact that we're sitting at 1.7. But all I know is... Let them sell. Let them sell. When they're all done and at max levels of short positions, when this thing takes a turn, you're going to watch them come screaming back in to buy bonds. All right, let's get into the data. All right. I did not I'm mean not to go sit here and go through the data. But <laughs> I, I, I swear, you know, oh, it's so cringy, dude. It's extremely, extremely cringy. I, uh, oh. 
Yeah, I think I gotta start doing these videos again when I'm I'm debunking people because um, you know whatever. I think it's just something that's required. He's gonna they're gonna get, they're gonna pay for it. A whole one point six seven percent. They will pay. Anyway, that's before I close out the video. All right, so S and P continues to sell off. Okay. Continues to sell off. Nasdaq uh, kind of holding, going sideways. And small caps are pushing even lower. So now what it looks like um, down here for the small caps, and these guys have been the market leaders, it's building that pressure here. So you got to start to believe that this is going to start to sell off. All right. That's what it looks like right now. We need the market to open up, but that's what it looks like. Uh, Taking a look at the world stock market uh, mostly red uh, I I'm not sure if this is accurately reflecting the data right now uh, if I remember correctly it didn't look like this at the end of close maybe it is I'm, I'm not sure but we'll see we'll see uh, but again um, not what people expected not with two vaccines and definitely not with um, uh, a, a package deal agreed upon. Maybe James is right. They're waiting to see if there's, you know, if they're going to sign it. If you know the crazy guy in the White House is going to sign it or whatever. I can tell you that the gold is up. All right, so that that's looking good, right? And I can tell you about Bitcoin. It's up to twenty-four thousand. Right? Remember, I was making that Thanksgiving video, and I'm like, these people are full of shit. Right? Well, they are full of shit. Um, this looks like it's going to push higher. It's in a nice little F flag. That's that's what you want to see, right? So you had the big thrust up, and now it's going into uh, F flag, and it will continue to go higher. The target again is 27,000, 30,000, then uh, up to uh, 36,000. All right. I'm not sure if it's going to do it in a straight shot or not, but that's that's the way we are, uh, what we're expecting. All right. It's in open waters, kicking ass, looking good. Uh, if it breaks down below, if it breaks down below here, you wanna, you wanna, you know, don't be adding. Or if you did buy here, you wanna stop out, let it correct, okay, and then take it back up again. All right. That's it for this video. I'll probably see you guys tomorrow live. Don't forget, come down and subscribe subscribe patreon.com slash real macro and they will pay for it they will pay they, they can't match the fed they can't do it god all right take care bye